Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. It's your Slime King, Dejima Man, and welcome to another video. Today's gonna be a little bit of a different kind of video. Uh, a little bit of a raw and unedited take about the general situation that the Genshin community and Genshin Impact itself finds it in right now. I'm not talking about specifically the cloud that Yai Miko has casted over the community, nor the fact that China is burning forests because of it. What I'm gonna talk about is the generality of it all, and the endless cycle of hate with each new character release in Genshin Impact. Now to give this a little bit of context, I've been playing since patch 1.0 and since then I've noticed many things and this is an endless cycle that seemingly keeps looping itself. Uh, look, I've seen the Zhongli fiasco, I've witnessed it. I've seen all the hate, all the outrage that has manifested and turned into one of the Geo Archon's most beloved buffs. But this isn't the same, right? This is probably in the same context in vain as Kokomi's hate or Shenha's hate or Raiden's hate or Yoimiya's hate. And as you could see or have heard, I've mentioned a lot of those characters and it's always been that way ever since there's a character that's quote unquote underpowered in most people's eyes. So let's talk about that today. Before we begin though, I'm sure you noticed, I have a new fucking model. This Slime King has freaking evolved. I mean, I was cute before, but bro, now, look at me. I'm hella cute. You know, there's no wrong opinion about what I look like. You know why? Because the only opinion is I'm hella cute, all right? So, with that out of the way, now let's get into the real deal. The three contributing factors to this endless cycle and what you can do about it. So, the first one is the Genshin Gacha. Now, to better illustrate my point, let's let's just give you an example, right? Let's say we're on the Yai Mika banner, and there's two people. One whale, one free-to-play. Two people who are opposite sides of the spectrum. The whale spends $6,000 on Yai Miko. The free-to-play saves Primo gems for like four to six months to get Yai Miko, right? Both of those people have the same viewpoint on Yai Miko. You want to know why? It's because when a person comes in, and hates or bashes on Yaimiko, those two same people will defend Yaimiko because the free-to-play person saved Primo Gems. The whale spent a lot of money. And this person that's bashing or hating Yaimiko invalidates their choice. That, that person who's criticizing Yaimiko is basically telling the person that invested their time and the person that invested their money that their choices for doing so for doing all that shit, for going through suffering or spending a ton of money, is wrong. And when a person feels violated like that, they will retaliate and that contributes a lot to the hate and toxicity that spreads in the community whenever there is a new character released. Now no matter how true the criticisms are, these people, the free to play, the whale, or whoever you might be, have these irrational conclusions on how to defend Yai Miko. This is what is otherwise called as a sunk cost fallacy. And this contributes a lot to how people perceive Yai Miko. Whether they know it or not, it influences their decision making, their opinions, and how they interact with other people. And for other people that don't have this sunk cost fallacy, they can see things more objectively, and that's where most of the disagreements occur. Now let's talk about some leaks. I'm not going to show you some leaks, but I am going to tell you the effect it has on this endless cycle of hate. Now don't get me wrong, for the player, leaks are a good thing, right? They help you save your primo gems and plan accordingly. However, as a community, it is a double-edged sword. On one side, it's good because you see their kit, you can analyze their kit and whether they are a good fit for you and like you see their drip. You know what I mean? And overall, it just gives you a feeling of this is what MiHoYo or HoYoVerse should be doing in order to promote its characters. However, the bad side is you can also see why HoYoVerse is not doing this. Because if they advertise a kit too soon when they're not even done with a kit itself, then people will have these biases or preconceived notions already developing, churning inside their head. Like, the reason why I don't like pre-release theory crafting in general is because most people who do them 
have these assumptions in their head that they never can know if it's the right assumptions because they've never even played the unit before. And once you've played the unit and you try those assumptions and those assumptions end up being wrong, then your whole analysis before release is wrong. So like, now you have these preconceived notions that ended up being wrong when you got the character, but the other people who read those analysis or read those thoughts about the character don't know about those assumptions most of the time anyway. So what they're what th those people are going to feel like is that they're going to feel like they're scammed. They're going to feel like they're ripped off. And that feeds into this whole thing of like hating on this character because that's not the character they thought it was going to be. You know what I mean? And that's why leaks sometimes contribute so much to the negativity towards the character. A perfect example of this is Kokomi, right? Kokomi pre-release was hated on so much because she was just so bad. But like on release, she had applications that nobody even thought of. And like, no one would have ever known that because they couldn't play her, they couldn't experiment with team comps with her. Everyone was just looking in a vacuum and saying, comparing Kokomi to other units, she's bad. You know? And that's the kind of toxicity that keeps happening over and over again, right? The same thing with Yaimiko and Fischl. So, in the end of the day, the leaks are a double-edged sword. You gotta know how to use it or else you'll be careful. You should be careful because you might cut yourself. Lastly, let's talk about some biases, all right? Biases feed into the endless cycle heavily, more so because it's a combination of all the things I just mentioned about the Genshin gotcha's money investment or time investment, about the leaks and the kit and all the investment you spent analyzing or simping for a character. And that's because there's two people usually that are very, very heavily biased, and it's those casual players and the meta players. The dissonance between those two people or types of people are so wide. I mean, come on. They're two people that are opposite sides of the spectrum, right? The meta people only care about meta. And when a character, let's say Yaimiko, doesn't fit into meta teams, they're not going to like her. And a casual player is a simp. If you like her, you like her. That's it. And there's also, of course, you know, the Slime King was in the middle. But, like, you know, nobody likes talking about the middleman. You know, everyone likes talking about the opposite extremes of a spectrum. Anyway, these biases weigh in heavily because you will have these irrational thoughts and arguments because you're only seeing one side of the picture. The important thing to note is that you have to be objective. But if you're a quote-unquote meta slave, then you can't be objective. If you're a quote-unquote casual, then you can't be objective. And you'll hold on to these biases and you can't see from the other side of the sea. And that's the thing that makes it so hard for people to understand each other. And then, lastly, 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 I'll talk about how these biases are formed even before the thoughts of meta or casual are even brought up to each person's mind, alright? Now, what do I mean by this? It's very simple. There's a lot of theories, there's a lot of fan art circulating the internet about characters in Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is a very popular game, so it's like, you will be hard-pressed not to see anything about Genshin in any of your social medias or anything you browse in the internet. And that contributes to your bias whether you like it or not. Because guess what? Subconsciously, passively, you're taking in that information. Now let me give you an example from me, the Slime King. I've read a lot of things about Zhongli, about Gyu Zhong, and how Gyu Zhong has been reincarnated to Ningguang as a symbol of a glazed lily, etc. Right? If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And because of that, I'm heavily attached to Zhongli and Ningguang. That's why I'm a Geo main, first and foremost. And because of that, if someone badmouths Ningguang or Zhongli, you know, the first reaction, the first instinct I have is to defend them. Of course, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to look at things objectively first, whether they have a point or not. Because if they don't have a point, you know, I'm going to go ham. But if, that, if they have a point, then, you know, what's the point in trying to fight back when they're right? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a purely subjective and objective thing at the same time. And that kind of thing feeds into this endless cycle of hate. Because especially for those people who are vulnerable or emotionally unstable, they will just react on their instincts, right? If somebody bashes or hates on their favorite character, they will instantly reply, and that spreads toxicity. And when there's toxicity, it's an echo chamber because everybody likes drama and everyone likes sharing that shit. So... 
at the end of the day, those biases contribute more so than anything else that I've said during this video. And I'm sure every one of us has biases as well. And the only thing that we can do, actually, in order to mitigate that is to... Well, I don't know how easy it is for you guys. But to think about what you're about to type before you type it. Or think about what you're going to say before you say it. Because, think about it first, before you type. Objectively examine. Am I typing this because I just like a character? Or am I typing this because... I've looked at it objectively, and this is my thoughts about it in as neutral way as possible. And not many people can do that because, to be honest, it's just easier typing than it is to fucking think about it before you're typing. And that's the reflexive nature, the instant gratification of a society that we live in today. And all of what I've talked about today, the Genshin gacha, the leaks, and especially the biases, is what feeds into this endless cycle of hate with each new character release in Genshin Impact. We've made it to the end of the video, boys. I know, I know this is a stark departure from my usual type of videos, but I just wanted to experiment a little bit, you know, edited videos versus unedited videos. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Should I keep doing these kinds of videos or not? I'm genuinely interested to know because, you know, it, it dictates the future of my content. Though, if you do like these kind of content and you don't want it on YouTube for whatever reason, you can always head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tujima, man, where I stream Genshin almost every day. And it's almost the same thing as this, except more stuttering and more gameplay that's derp. But it's real time and you can ask questions to me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Thank you, as always. I mean, thank you for the 1,000 subs. And as always, this is our parting. Farewell.